And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here. Something a little bit different today. I normally daily vlog with just what I'm doing, what I'm going on about uh, on the 3D printers in my ultimate quest to try to generate some sales from here at home using my 3D printers. And I've been focusing a lot on large models. If you've been a fan of the channel, you know I print these like big guns. They get uh, a lot of traffic on my Etsy. Not a lot of sales though, uh, for, because for many of them, uh, when I printed them, I just kind of printed them as big as I possibly could. Multi-part, glued them together, been painting them. Uh, but as I migrate and use the Gigamore, I'm trying to reduce that down, really cut down on uh, post-production, uh, and then really start to think about shipping because shipping is b by far the most expensive part of this process. And so with this Colt Python model, if you've been a fan of the channel, you know that I printed one that was really kind of oversized and in trying to resize it down and make it multi-part, I accidentally made it a little smaller. And actually by making it a little bit smaller, it came in undersized so I could ship it for a lot less. So I can charge a lot less. So hopefully more people buy it. That's more just total volume. Uh, so today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about boxes. So this Colt Python model, um, it's kind of odd shape. So from the butt here, all the way to the tip. It's one unit. This is the one that has the rotating drum. Uh, the bullets are kind of painted in a little bit of a different color. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that I'm gonna keep producing it. Uh, maybe go back to the drawing board and kind of do it to where I can print it in the color it's supposed to be so I can just glue it together and not have to paint anything. Uh, but one of the real holdups was the shipping because you put this in a box that's just one inch too big in any direction and suddenly it's $300 to ship it versus like $100, $120. So the point I'm driving at is that if anyone else is in a similar situation, this is just what I'm doing. This is not instructional, this is just exhibition. Uh, my thinking was to get the largest box that kind of has some like uniform dimensions that is able to be under that oversized shipping charge and then base my models around that. So instead of trying to make just the biggest model, I try to make the biggest model that I know will fit into a box of this size or in some variant of that dimension. So this one just happens to be around that. So thank you Colt Python for kind of inspiring that. I got this box here. This is a 48 24 by 12. It's very large. I got it from Uline. So like I've said in many videos, I've been, I have another business that I've been doing for you know, 12, 13 years, something like that. I've been using Uline the whole time. So if you're unfamiliar, Uline's like a B2B, like uh, commercial stuff you know, that businesses need. So they have everything from things like pallet racks to tissue paper to toilet paper to material handling, shipping supplies. And, you, know, yeah, you can go to their website and look around. It has a ton of stuff. And if you're in business already, you probably are already familiar with Uline. Uh, some of the advantages is that they have a lot of stuff and that it usually shows up the next day. Uh, it, they're very quick. The only downside to this is, if you want to guess, yeah, they're a little pricey. So, uh, you know, you pay for that convenience but most of this stuff is commercial grade. I don't think I've ever gotten anything that's poor quality off of Uline before. Uh, and often in business, you know, this is again, just an opinion, just how I operate. Um, I'm not so much looking for, uh, I'm more concerned with making dollars than I am saving dollars. And I kind of applied that to the, the whole business mindset about running my other businesses is that, you know, you can try to cut costs, but if you're in the mode of cutting costs, I think that effort is better applied into generating more money. Um, and so when things like Uline come into play, it's like, well, I could spend or pay someone a bunch of time to go through and find through the various different avenues what the cheapest version of some widget is that we need, or I could just get it on Uline and then refocus efforts onto generating more money. Uh, and I think that's the better way to go. Opinions vary, depends on the industry, yada, yada, yada. Um, your mileage may vary and so forth, but I use Uline for a lot of stuff, uh, especially boxes, because they have quite literally every box that you can possibly imagine. So if you go over here and you take a look, over 1700 box sizes and you know it's going to be kind of stupid for me to try to list them all but you just go here and hit page down and it's literally any size box that you could possibly want and oftentimes they're on sale so if you need something that's around say an 18 12 5 uh, it's a buck 95 per box with a minimum order of 25. The price goes down if you buy more. Uh, but if you needed that size box, you could say, well, I can get 18 12 sixes for a buck 45. Um, and so you could, you know, you know, maybe save some money there. So it makes sense to look around varying strengths, varying sort of things, all the accoutrements that go along with it, packing tape and, you know, supports and packing material and peanuts and airbags and things like that. So it's a great resource. At my scale, it doesn't really make sense for me to be buying a whole bunch from here, but it's super duper convenient. And for some of these large models, 
Having tried to pack up some of these large models before and cobble something together, it took a ton of time. So I just bit the bullet and went and got something that would fit it. So that's kind of what I aim to do here with this Colt Python model. Now the Colt Python will fit into this comfortably. There'll be lots of extra space, but having a, a slightly larger box, I can cut it down and fit it in. It's semi-rigid. This is only the 200 pound test box. It's not a heavy duty and I don't think I need it because I can 3D print supports that go inside if need be, but the packing material is gonna do most of the work. And it's a lot sturdier than trying to build my own box. I was building it from flat pieces of cardboard earlier. That's just taking too much time. So let's pop this sucker open and see if she fits. I'm doing this live. You know I do it live for your benefit. Is Technicals really making a video about putting something in a box? You're damn right I am. 48. 24 12 deep will our colt python fit not only will it fit this way but it'll fit this way which means some of those even larger guns that i have will fit inside of this and i know if i ship this full sized it's going to come in in that underside or not undersized shipping charges but regular shipping charges and not the oversized so i think what i can do is just kind of cut it here fold it down and make it a little bit tighter let's time lapse that okay All right, so that box at 48, 24, 12, uh, at, I put it in at 20 pounds. Uh, would have cost $130 to ship, and I, I priced my things out going from my zip code in North Carolina to Beverly Hills, 90210. I'm sure it costs more to go to like Alaska and places like that, but uh, I don't do free shipping outside the United States. Uh, so at its regular size would have been $135. I think it was, I looked a few hours ago. Uh, but by cutting the box just a little bit in all those directions, it brought it down to $89. So significant savings, that's an extra $50 should so someone buy it, or at least an extra $50 that I can come down on the price to hopefully elicit more sales. So like, you know, selling just one of these, that basically finances like five more boxes. I mean, if you wanna look at it like that, I mean, I, I know in the beginning at least, it's, uh, it's convenient to think of things in those terms. It kind of helps take the edge off of some of the more expensive purchases. Uh, now, again, at my scale, this really doesn't make sense, but this is way more convenient for me, uh, especially with those large models. So this is good, too, because things like the, the Glock, which is by far gets the most traffic, um, any way I measured that out, I couldn't get in under the oversized shipping charges. So now I'll be able to fit it sort of diagonal and maybe bring the price down and kind of move some of these out. Uh, Cause I've really been thinking lately about trying to sell off a lot of these and then use that as like encouragement to kind of modify the model a little bit, make it a little more printable, kind of do it in fewer parts in the filament color it's supposed to be so I can just stamp it out take it off the printer, glue it together and send it and kind of eliminate painting. So kind of a short content for today, just kind of working on that and figured I'd kind of slap together a video for it. Gonna continue doing the daily vlogs uh, uh, back at it tomorrow with all the various prints and things that we've got going on. But I'd love to know what your take and your position is on boxes. Uh, do you buy standard size boxes? Cause I also have ordered some boxes that are 10, 10, 10, which is like the size that any bamboo printer, or most printers that are a 256 build plate can accommodate. So I figure if I get a multi-height, a, multi a variable height box, uh, then anything and everything I could possibly print on a bamboo plate, I know will fit in one of those boxes, even if it's, you know, as big as it could possibly be. I think that's a good thing moving forward to just get a stack of those and you know that you've got a box for it instead of trying to find a box or an old box or something like that to ship. Again, depends on your size and how much you're willing to put into it. Uh, but if you already do that, let me know what your experience is with it in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.